Hello, everyone. I'm Mooney Young, Resource Centre Director for Central Ontario, including the Halton Peel, Niagara, St. Catharines and Hamilton areas. It is my pleasure to introduce our session today, titled Music, a Powerful Therapeutic Tool, presented by Heidi Ahunen, PhD. Heidi is also a registered psychotherapist and accredited music therapist. She is a fellow of music and guided imagery and a professor of music therapy in the Faculty of Music at Wilfrid Laurier University. She is also coordinator of graduate studies and director of the Manfred and Penny Conrad Institute for Music Therapy Research. Heidi's presentation introduces the key neurological and psychological findings that impact music psychotherapy practice. I'll turn the session over to Heidi now. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think it's wonderful that uh, you wanted to invite me to speak about the power of music in this conference. So um, my presentation today is going to introduce the key neurological findings and some psychological findings that impact music therapy practice and music psychotherapy practice. And in the end of my presentation, there is some time for uh, discussion and questions. And I'm going to do some little experiments during this presentation as well. So if you want to participate those, you can uh, write your comments and your reflections into the into the chatting on the, I believe it's on the right side of your screen or, or it's down on, on your screen. So when we are researching the power of music, um, there's many different ways to do it, of course. But I think uh, one of the main uh, uh, difference is that we can study music therapy and then we can study music medicine. So there are two different practices. And when we discuss about music therapy, it means that there is always therapist, there's always client, and then they do something with music. There is some kind of relationship with music. Music is used as a tool in this therapy. For example, it, it helps uh, expressing emotions or recognizing emotions or working through diff different uh, or difficult life situations, for example. So that would be music therapy. It would always involve music therapist. Then we have these uh, studies that investigate music medicine. And those are kind of interesting studies because uh, they investigate all these situations where a human being is using music as their own therapeutic tool. It's almost like this self-care situation. You may be listening to music and then all kinds of things happen on your brain level and in your body and, and you may feel relaxed or you may feel energized or something like that because you were listening to music or maybe you are playing music and you have different kinds of emotions. But there is no music therapist uh, involved. So it's not music therapy, it's more like music medicine. And there's lots of studies that have investigated how music impacts for example, our brain. All kinds of uh, brain studies have already uh, studied how music impacts brain and how it impacts our body and, and hormonal levels and all kinds of things like that. So today I'm going to share some of these studies first and then in the end I will be, I will be discussing a little bit about the psychological impact of music as well. So first uh, reason why I would use music as a therapeutic tool is that according to many studies, music happens everywhere in the brain. And basically music happens everywhere in the brain at the same time. And there's many studies that show how learning music helps us with concentration, helps us with memory, helps us with focus. Very well-known neurologist uh, Oliver Sacks actually claims that music is everywhere in our brain. 
we know that there is speech section, there's visual section and an and area of uh, motoral activity in our brain, but there isn't really any one particular place for music because music happens everywhere in our brain because uh, it is a multi-sensory stimulus and it can affect all kinds of different uh, sensory receptors at the same time. So I think that's one reason why music is such a powerful therapeutic tool. It activates us. We, it's very difficult to remain passive when we are doing something with music. Another reason why music is a powerful tool is that music activates both sides of the brain. The left side and the right side. And um, with our left brain half, we um, understand rhythmic uh, components of the music as well as we understand the words of the songs that we are singing, for example, or listening. With our brain, uh, with, with our right uh, side of our brain, we uh, understand and, and experience melody and harmony. So uh, music activates both of these sides of the brain basically at the same time. So when we are listening to music or when we are playing music, we are very activated indeed. And there's lots of studies around that and those are on your PDF uh, if you are interested. Another reason why I use music with my clients and also for my own self-care is that music activates the emotional core of the brain. And the limbic system is something that is called as a emotional core of the brain. And um, maybe because it is our limbic system that is responsible in interpreting emotional responses, storing memories in hippocampus, for example, uh, regulating hormones. So many studies show how music really activates the limbic system. And it could be that when you are listening to a piece of music, you suddenly start feeling an emotion. It is very typical that people go to concert and then they start crying. It's quite typical. They have this emotion, something that we call a good cry. Like you, you kind of feel sad, but it's good sadness in a way. And, 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 and you become to cry and it almost like releases some, something. Uh, and, and you feel almost like release or relaxation um, during this um, concert, this, this experience of listening to music. But why do we have this emotion when we are listening to music? It's because our limbic system activates. And it could be that when our limbic system activates and we start to feel some kind of emotion or feeling, that emotion and feeling is also somehow associated with a memory, you know, something that we experienced maybe sometimes in our past, a good experience or, or maybe not so good experience. So many people ask me often that what kind of music, you know, is therapeutic? And it's very hard to answer to that question because all of us, we have different experiences stored in our hippocampus, in our limbic system. All, everything that we ever experienced in our life is basically stored somewhere. And now when we are listening to music, you know, some of these memories may suddenly activate and we never know what music activates what. And we never know ahead of time what kind of music activates what kind of emotions because we all have a little bit different experiences and a li little bit different emotions that are uh, associated with these memories. So, so limbic system and the idea that music activates the limbic system explains the, the idea that music activates our uh, emotions. There is this saying in, in music psychotherapy and music therapy that music sounds as our feelings feel. And I think it's one of the key things about music psychotherapy that I try to teach to my students that 
music sounds as my feelings feel. Sometimes we don't have words to describe our emotion. You know, sometimes emotions are so difficult, they are so complex that there is no words to, to describe it. But sometimes music sounds exactly like this feeling feels. And I think that's one of the, the, the reasons that we feel that music is such a powerful therapeutic tool. So I'm going to do a little, a little experiment with you now. So um, you see here is this um, photo. It's um, C and, and somebody's swimming there if you don't see it clearly. So that's the photo. Somebody's swimming on this sea. So um, if you wish, you can write, uh, just listen to this piece of music. It's very short. Listen to this piece of music and then just like freely associate, write down the emotional atmosphere or the mood that you, you, you feel when you are looking at this uh, photo while you are uh, listening to this music. And if you wish, you can write it down into the chat. So then maybe that can be even shared with, with others. So write down the emotional atmosphere that you experience or feel when you are looking at this picture and listening to this music. Music will start now. <laughs> So that was the experiment, and uh, I wonder if if there is any if there was if anybody wrote anything on the chat. If there's any reflections, if yes, Haiti, we have the words joyful, energetic, anticipation, happiness. Yes, yes, very good. Like joyful, happiness, energetic. Yes. And that was the atmosphere of this picture. So let's do another one now. It's the same picture. And I'm going to put another music on. And now I want you to do the same thing. Just free associate. First things that come to your mind when you are looking at this picture and hearing this music. Okay, so <laughs> what kind of uh, atmosphere it was this time? So we have quite a few responses for this one. We have um, anticipation, oh, sorry, we have anxiety, fear, stress, danger, 
um, runaway shark, uh, yes. for bodying, suspense, uncertainty, flight, stressful. <laughs> yes, yeah, kind of scary things like fear and anxiety, running away, shark, and of course this music was from the from the uh, that old movie about this horrible shark. <laughs> so, so what I was trying to show with this little experiment that it's the same photo, same. Uh, scenario it's actually my daughter swimming in uh, in this sea somewhere in cuba like a long time ago and depending what kind of music i put into the background it totally makes the it it makes makes it different it it it, it creates a different atmosphere and totally different emotion and different kind of expect, expectations and anticipations but it is all because our limbic system is actually activating when we are listening to music. And of course, all the movie music and ev all, everything like that is very much based on this, this idea. So there's lots of studies that prove the emotional effect of music. But uh, one of the key findings in all of these studies is that it's the familiar music that comes from our heart. So whenever I'm working with clients in music therapy, I always want to find out that what is their music, what is their familiar music that speaks to them, especially when I'm working with people who are from different cultures and different backgrounds. I always try to learn what is their music, that what is the music that is familiar to them, what is the music that comes from their heart? Because according to all these research projects, that music is the most therapeutic for us. That music is the most calming, most uh, relaxing, most therapeutic in, in, in many ways. And I'm just wondering that maybe sometimes, you know, we don't have time during this uh, presentation now, but I'm just wanting to leave you this uh, reflection ideas, uh, if you are considering what kind of music could be therapeutic for you, what kind of music you should be listening, then uh, maybe uh, you would like to do a little research and ask yourself that what were your earliest musical memories, uh, what kind of music you remember that really is in your heart still you know, the first music that you remember from your early childhood, something that maybe somebody was singing to you or you were listening. And maybe you remember certain songs from the school years. Maybe you have some, uh, you know, some music that is from your youth, from your high school years, maybe music that is very you know, it has something to do with your first love, for example, or something like that. And, and those are those familiar music experiences that are very much in our limbic system and in our heart. And, and whenever we listen to those music, doesn't matter where we are, when we listen, when we hear that song, it immediately takes us into that moment and it brings us this... Uh, certain kind of feeling. So I think it's a good exercise for all of us to do and ask these questions for ourselves and actually find out that what is my music? What music comes from my heart? So I'm going to now discuss a little bit about the different ways music impacts our hormones and neurotransmitters because it has uh, very interesting and in important impacts on, on our lives. And it's good to know how music affects. So one uh, hormone that music impacts is endorphins. So music basically releases endorphins. And, and according to the studies, it has to be an uplifting music that does that. And again, what is uplifting music? You know, there is no, um, clear answer to that because I believe for all of us we, we, we have different idea of uplifting music but something that is uplifting for me may not be uplifting for you so again it is this 
music that comes from your heart, that you have good memories about you. It, it has, it's somehow associated with good feelings and good emotions. And that is the uplifting music that uh, releases endorphins. And chemically, endorphins are like morphine in many ways. So, so they increase our body's uh, thresholds for pain. They can battle depression. They can even impact our immunity system. But basically, they just make us feel good. They, they relax. They, they give this sense of feeling good. So it is a, a good idea to investigate what would be your endorphin music and why. So if you need to feel good, you can put that music on and you can allow yourself to have this little endorphin boost with music that you like and you feel is uplifting. There are also studies that investigate um, depression and music listening or uh, playing music and, and, and they have very good results. And one idea there is that music listening and music playing releases serotonin, which is of course one of those hormones that is lacking when, when, when we have, when we suffer depression. So some studies, for example, claim that music that has 10 hertzes, uh, low frequency sound, 10 hertzes, all music is basically, a comp all music is based on these low frequency sounds. So some studies um, claim that it's this uh, 10 hertzes sound that has been found to activate serotonin. So I'm going to uh, just play you a little clip of that so you will hear how 10 hertzes sound. So it sounds like that. And I don't know what comes to your mind when you are listening to that, but very often many people say that, okay, it sounds like rain, or it sounds like being on seaside, like sounds like waves. And of course, these are kind of associations that we, you know, we often associate with sense of calm and peace and and, and, and relaxation. If you're interested in this kind of music, 10 Hertz, you can go to YouTube and you can Google them and you can find all kinds of different uh, com uh, composers who, who have been composing music that is based on this uh, 10 Hertz, if you feel that that could maybe relax you. So here I listed some studies that have uh, investigated music and, and, and decrease of depression. And again, this you can, you can investigate further if you are interested. Another interesting hormone that music impacts is uh, prolactin. It's called prolactin and music releases this prolactin. And, and prolactin is one of those soothing hormones that we, we have. And it's the same hormone that is released, for example, when uh, uh, mothers are nursing their infants. So it's this soothing hormone, this feel-good hormone that, that is being released when we have this sense of being close with other human beings and, and we have this cozy feeling, this nice, comforting feeling. So then that, uh, that hormone is released. And, and many studies show how music releases this prolactin. And the same studies um, um, explain the reason why music sometimes makes us cry, you know, in, in a good way, why music sometimes allows us to have this good cry that is almost like cleansing for, for our system. And, 
And and like myself, uh, I I'm, I come from Finland, so my accent obviously comes from Finland too. And um, what is very typical with our music in my cultural background is that it's always in minor mode. It's sad, like it sounds sad. It sounds sad even if it is about happiness. It sounds sad even if the you know, words of the song are like really joyful. So, but for myself, because I grew up in that culture, that is the music from my heart. And I would almost like say that sad music makes me happy, right? It's, it's the sad sounding music that obviously releases prolactin on me. And then it makes me feel com comfortable and cozy and it's almost like the soothing and comforting feeling that I get when I listen to this particular sad sounding music because it makes me happy. But of course these are all cultural things and but but very very interesting studies I think. So another reflection topic for yourself as a homework <laughs> um, what kind of music would give you this good cry, like this, this release of emotions, you know, often we keep emotions inside, we suppress them, we suppress them, we suppress them, but sometimes it's very therapeutic to let them come and, you know, I, I think I, we see that happening often in concert halls. Or when we are watching a movie, you know, we, we cry a little bit and then we feel like, relaxed or release or something like that. Um, then the next hormone that music has an impact is, is uh, cortisol or adrenaline. And those are the stress hormones. Cortisol and adrenaline, they are both uh, stress hormones, basically. And, and when we are under lots of stress, for example, if we are traumatized, then basically our entire body is filled with cortisol. And if we are in that situation really long time, it's, of course, damaging for our body because too much cortisol in our body impacts everything. For example, it affects our memory functions, it affects our decision making, it affects our concentration and focus. And uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, it's very much the aftermath of too much cortisol in somebody's body. You know, when we experience something traumatizing, cortisol fills our body and then it may be very traumatizing, you know, for everything that uh, happens. Like, for example, hippocampus may, uh, that, that stores our uh, memories may be damaged. And uh, there's changes in the limbic system around amygdala, for example, that uh, uh, regulates fear responses. And, and so, so too much cortisol in our body is not a good thing. <laughs> so, so saying, you know, uh, that's, that's important to understand. And many studies, so there's lots of studies that actually prove that music, listening and playing music can actually decrease levels of stress. It can, it can decrease the levels of cortisol and adrenaline in, in our body. And at the same time, of course, it boosts our immunity system because too much cortisol in our body, the immunity system uh, weakens. And also at the same time, it, it decreases our blood pressure because too much cortisol in our body usually incre increases the blood pressure. So I'm just showing you a couple of examples here of music that they have been using in these studies that... Uh, they found that they're decreasing the cortisol levels of the research participants.
Siente en otro tono. Ah, sube. Yeah, it's just a little example, like all these studies have different music that they were using, but these particular ones were from the host planets, Jupiter and, and Venus music. So again, you could ask yourself, what would be your stress release music? And there is no right answers or ro wrong answers to that. We all have different music that releases our stress. And sometimes it is music that is somehow associated with our good memories that, and, and good emotions and something that we really enjoy and something that is uplifting, uh, maybe peaceful. But at the same time with some other people, the stress, uh, stress release music may be really like lots of beat and really fast and very energizing. So we are very different as human beings. So there is really, no right or wrong way to experience music. I always say that music is a matter of taste. <laughs> That's why uh, it would be very hard for me to answer that, okay, what would be the, the music I should be listening? But of course, when they were doing these studies, they were using certain kinds of music and, and then they were investigating the impact of that music. So then another hormone that is impacted by music is called oxytocin. And um, that is activated when we are doing something with music with other people. So doing something together with other people is very, very therapeutic and, and involving music with that. For example, singing together, listening to music together or playing music together uh, and, and the oxytocin hormone is then released and it helps us connect with each other and it helps us to, to gain this uh, uh, feeling of trust with each other. It, it basically bonds people together. So it's very typical uh, in the world, whenever there is something horrible happening, you know, somewhere in the world, that after this horrible happening, there is, there are musicians gathering and, and, and they organize these events where people come and they sing together. <laughs> and and, and uh, it has this effect that they are singing together and at the same time, time they are bonding together, they are creating this sense of trust to this world again after something horrible, horrible has happened. And uh, of course, in different cultures all over the world, there's different musical, uh, different kind of music that bonds people together. So, Another reflection piece for yourself that maybe you remember some situations in your life that music made you feel sense of belonging. And I, I think maybe that's the reason why, why music is involved in every culture, in rituals like funerals, there's music. Uh, 
weddings, their music. So music follows us all through our lives, basically, whenever we have these important moments in our lives. But at the same time, it, it bonds us with other people. It has this uh, community effect. And other hormone that music releases is called dopamine, and that is a love hormone. So it is this hormone that gives us this uh, um, feeling of pleasure. And there's lots of studies again uh, around this. And, um, and, and, and some of the studies show that only an anticipation of some kind of certain melody in the music boosts dopamine in us. So you could ask yourself that what would be your dopamine uh, releasing music. And then there is melatonin. Music increases level of melatonin and maybe also decreases insomnia, which is really important. But again, you would have to study and investigate what kind of music it is that really helps you to calm down and uh, what kind of music helps you to uh, calm your heartbeat and, and, and decrease your blood pressure and helps you to calm down your thinking. You know, that would be the right type of music to listen just before going to sleep. I wrote an article some years ago about uh, all these things. If you are interested, um, you can read it. Um, but now I want to say a few words about how music provides us a safe environment for trauma processing as well. So this is the idea of um, what is the psychological rationale behind music therapy and the, the, the power of music. So one important thing always when, if we have experienced something difficult in our life, if we have experienced traumatizing experiences, for example, is that we find a way how to ground ourselves, how to stabilize our emotions, how, how to find sense of safety in our lives and, and empowering experiences. So music can sometimes serve as this uh, comforting or grounding uh, tool. Almost like little kids, babies, they have this blanket that they, they, they hug and it has the particular smell and particular feel and it makes the baby feel safe. In, in a new environment, for example. So music can be very similar for us. And um, it would be interesting, like I think it's always interesting to investigate what would be your blank music? What would be the music that makes you feel extremely safe? Is there a music like that? Is there music that relaxes you? Is there music that comforts you and calms you? Or is there a particular music that energizes you? Music that makes you feel strong, music that makes you feel that, oh, I have power, I can, I can do this. Uh, so, so those are kind of things that I, I would discuss with my clients and, and we would try to find their uh, safety music and then their power music. Both. I would do all kinds of grounding and relaxation activities with people who have experienced trauma, something that they could then do at home on their own. Uh, like, for example, we could do relaxation exercises during music listening or drumming the instruments or humming or breathing exercises, vocalizing exercises, uh, all kinds of uh, exercises with playing instruments. Or we could do some kind of auditory discrimination exercises and, and, and plan some kind of, for example, a song or melody or rhythm that, that
that, that I can sing or tap or hum in my mind, then I'm triggered with disturbing memories. Or it could be a song that reminds me that I'm safe, even though I may not feel safe because I may have some, some memories from my past. Or music that makes me feel grounded and, and strong or energized. Uh, music provides this symbolic distance. That's, that, that means that um, it's kind of safe to share your difficult experiences with music because music itself sounds angry or sad or full of anxiety or chaotic or peaceful or joyful or all these different things, just like our emotions feel. So that idea that music sounds like my feelings feel. So in the beginning of the therapeutic uh, process, the, my clients may discuss about music, that, oh, this music is sad. And then after a while, they begin to recognize that, wow, it's not actually the music that is sad, but I also feel that sadness. This music sounds like my feeling, or this music sounds like my childhood family, or it reminds me of my grandmother, or this music reminds me of the war experiences or refugee experiences I had or something like that. So then the next step on the therapy process is that they begin to label and express and share and work through their emotions. And more you do that, more you begin to understand your emotions, more you gain control over your emotions. And then in the end, the, the goal is to integrate the bad experiences uh, with, the, with the present and not to let them uh, bother too much and impact too much. Um, so there's all kinds of things that I do with my clients in, in music therapy. I don't really have time to go all, all of them, but music listening is for sure one very typical activity that we do. Music comes from stereo. It was maybe composed by somebody 100 years ago, but when it reaches my limbic system, it actually becomes very personal. Suddenly it activates my memories and my emotions. And now, while speaking about this music, I'm actually speaking about myself and I can have this experience that, oh, it's just like I feel or it sounds like me. And then in the therapy, we can do all kinds of things like drawing our experiences or writing about them, writing poetry, doing songwriting or even moving with music because it becomes personal and we can work through this experience. Improvisation with instruments is another activity that I do. It's called clinical improvisation in music psychotherapy. And it means that, um, you know, I, I will ask my client to pick up an instrument and then begin to play and express with this instrument how they feel right now. Almost like imagining that this instrument can speak Speak, you know, and, and then they begin to, you know, bang the drum or play the piano, like almost like thinking that the piano is also a drum that you can just have like a, a dark sounds when you, you play on the left side and kind of happier sounds when you play on the, on the right side, like that kind of idea of playing piano, that the sound, again, it sounds like my feelings feel. So, so there are all kinds of different um, activities like that, that, that we can do with, with, with clients. Uh, reflecting all kinds of emotions or role-playing different situations with instruments, uh, for example. So for example, one activity that I often do is a songwriting activity. And I ask my clients to write a song that includes an ad advice that they would like to give to others or, or something that they would like to teach others based on their own difficult life experience. So if this is something you would be interested, you could maybe do at home and write a song about your experiences and something that 
with this song you would like to teach others. Another songwriting activity or improvisation activity would be what kind of good memories you have stored in your heart, you know, that kind of song about uh, good emotions, good uh, memories that you have stored in your uh, heart, or songwriting about your future dreams, your hopes, your wishes, your plans, or a uh, some kind of uh, music listening activity around the safe place and peaceful place that you have in your memories, and then maybe writing a song about that a safe place or nice place or peaceful place. And then you can go to that song and that, this image when you have difficult times in, in your life. So I think we are ending my <laughs> time now. So, so now if you have any, any questions, we have a few minutes for the questions. Thank you. Yeah, we have a couple questions. Um... Uh, the first one is, how would you suggest using music with someone who is no longer able to speak or who has limited communication ability? Um, listening to music or playing music, we don't have to speak at all. We can be totally nonverbal and the music does exactly the same impact on us. So I think that's why music is quite a lovely tool because no speak, no speaking needed. It can be taught. It, it's nonverbal experience. It activates the brain memories. And, and for example, one idea is that you are listening to music and then you maybe draw your experience, you know, just colors that uh, somehow in your mind sound like this music. They, they look like this music. Or you listen to the music and then you go to an instrument and you actually express how you feel after listening to that music and you don't have to speak at all. Okay. And the other question is, do you have a resource or a website that uh, we could guide people to to find a music therapist near them? If they're interested? Um, yes, there is a um, CAMT dot CA. And that is Canadian Association. CM CA. MT. Yes. MT dot CA. C A M T. Okay, I've just put it in the chat so people can see. Yes, the and th that is a Canadian Association of Music Therapy. And every province has its own district. So, for example, here in Ontario, we have Ontario Association of Music Therapists. So you can, you can reach them and ask that, okay, I need a music therapist on this city or this town and they will actually advertise for the therapists who are there and then somebody will contact you so it's a great resource that's amazing thank you so much so i think that's it for our questions for today so thank you haiti that was so fascinating we are so fortunate to have had the opportunity to experience and benefit from your expertise today